Hi everyone, it's Erica back on the Altenew YouTube channel and today we're gonna have a real good look at the inked poppies press plate. We're gonna use some better press paper and ink um, and we're also gonna get our better press platform out of course because we need that and I will be using my little saver because I'm one of those weirdos who do not like that my platform gets stained. So I created this little acetate film protector thing that I use while I'm inking up my plate so that the platform itself stays clean. That makes sense, right? It, it's, is it just me? I, I mean, it might just be me, but I think it's kind of genius. So yeah, I, I, I'm gonna stick with that. Now, the reason I am using the Better Press ink instead of Altenew ink is because I actually wanted to try something. So I, you might notice that I'm, I'm dabbing as well as rubbing the ink onto the, the panel because I do find that it just kind of, it, it just takes a long time. Okay, it takes a long time to get the Better Press plates or the, any like letterpress plates really, really good inked up. It cannot be just me. I don't think it's just me, unless I'm doing something really, really wrong. So I um, I thought, you know what? I don't kind of mind if I ruin this ink pad because it was the one that came like free with the, the platform. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a go. I didn't want to ruin my alternate ink pad. So I thought, you know what? This little one, it's gonna be our, um, it's gonna be our sacrificial lamb today. So I, uh, I rubbed, rubbed, rubbed the ink all over our um, beautiful inked poppies press plate. And then we're going to use some watercolor paper here. This is the better press paper. And we're gonna secure it with a little bit of post-it tape to our little saber thing here. And then we're gonna run the whole shebang through the die cutting machine. You might have noticed that all of this has been done in real time, so it literally is just a couple of minutes to get a panel done, uh, you know, minus my stupid jabbering there in the beginning. So we're just gonna run this through, nice and steady, no need to rush, just go slow and steady, and then we're gonna open this up and reveal our beautiful panel. Uh, well, I am actually going to be using some Corinne markers to uh, color this today because I don't have any of the dual tip markers from Altenu. However, I will definitely be adding those to my stash when I am in the US later this month. Yes, at the time of this video going live, I am in the US. Yay! So I will probably have already been shopping lots. But uh, for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear off our desk a little bit and then we're gonna zoom in a little bit because we are going to do quite an in-depth coloring tutorial, I guess you could say. So um, the way I use watercolor markers is when I want a nice, nice coloring. I, okay, that, that kind of came out a little bit wrong. So when I want to build up texture and like, you know, details and all of this, what I tend to do is I use one of these watercolor brushes and then I take a little bit of ink from the tip of the marker and then I I build up. We're gonna build, build, build. So we're gonna put some color down. So this is very, very light green and we are going to put a little bit down all over these leaves. This is gonna be quite a light color wash and if there are some white spaces on your leaves as well, I wouldn't worry about it because it would just help you create those highlights on your leaves because you don't want it to be super flat like all one color you know we're not gonna color like when we were four we are gonna try to elevate our coloring and take it to the next step so a soft 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 start or base and then you will go in with other colors or you wait until this is completely dry and then you go in with the same color because you don't actually need a huge bunch of watercolor markers or watercolors even. You can actually build up your colors with most colors uh, or watercolor products, you can do this. So there's no need to buy like a hundred marker set or something like that. You, you don't have to do that, save your pennies and then just work on your technique rather than spending lots of money on on the supplies. So with the dual tip markers, for instance, that Altenew has available in the shop, there's a lot of, uh, so there's four different sets and a lot of them 
except for one, has got pretty much like a rainbow of colour, whether it's like really bright or a little bit more pastel. So you get a lot of colours and combinations that you can create yourself in the pack. So I like that a lot. Um, now here, um, I have actually moved on to another colour. So this is, I have three different colour greens which it's a little bit excessive, but I do have the whole set of Corinne markers. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with it, okay? And then we are going to kind of keep building up the, the colors here and like our texture and, and the, the depth and the details and stuff. Now I cannot overstate how important it is to just let everything dry in between. So when you have an image like this with a lot of different leaves, try to keep a track of where you started and kind of like do either counterclockwise or clockwise so that you keep track of where where you started and then give every every little bit a little bit of time to dry in between it will just give you so much better results i promise so we're gonna obviously i did forget the stem <laughs> a bit of a boo-boo there but i'm gonna go in with my final green here and we're gonna go quite heavy and we're gonna go with lots and lots of ink on our watercolor brush. Now, if you want really like full on details, which I will be doing, unfortunately, the that little part didn't film, of course. Um, once all of this is dry and I've done several layers, I am actually gonna go in with marker directly to paper to really create that kind of like the deep dark contrast to kind of create the shadows and the lights and all of that. So I will show you the card up close when it's finished. It's really sad that that bit didn't film, but you know, sometimes I'm telling you technology is got, it's, it's, it's out to get me. So, um, yeah, but we're going to move on to our pink here and you can see it's quite a light sort of brush of pink and we are not going to go all over every single little bit of the petal. We are going to leave some white spaces here so that we can work with those like highlights and then create the contrast with um, our darker colors later on. But yeah, it's just coloring with one of these refillable water paint brushes has been a revelation because it just gives you so much more like, I, I feel like it gives you a lot of control and it also gives you a lot of options because you can dilute your color and then when you know, when you're wanting to build up, you just squeeze out the the excess water on the in the bristles, and you just go in with lots and lots and lots of ink, and mm, yes, tip top tool that for sure. Now I'm fully aware that we have been here a long, long time, and we are still coloring away, and there's still more to go. So I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Now, if you want to see more of this type of coloring with the press plates and things, I would love to hear that. So please do drop me a comment down below. And if there is interest in like the real time coloring as well, I will definitely make a note of that and, you know, tips and tricks and things like that, because I really, really do enjoy watercolor brushes. I just find them so versatile and they're so easy to travel with, which is very good for me because I live in Spain so when I my father lives in Sweden my mother lives in Finland my sister lives in England and a lot of my friends live in the US so there is a lot of traveling I'm not gonna lie there's a lot of traveling so having something that is easy to travel with and fun to use is super super handy cannot overstate that because if I don't get to create on a regular basis I do tend to go a little bit like bonkers it's, it's one of those little I want to say it's a quirk, but you know, like some people get hangry, which admittedly I do as well, but it's almost like I get um, like craftily, like, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing, <laughs> but anyway, okay. Now you can kind of see here how we're starting to build up some like um, contrast and some dimension here. And it's really just from adding color and kind of thinking about where it's going I mean, on the actual press plate as well, you have those kind of like dark shadows. So you already have a very good idea of like where some of these like contrast bits are gonna go. Now, if you wanna just kind of go color willy nilly and just have a happy old time, I highly encourage that because crafting and card making should be about creating joy and then having fun, definitely. 
definitely i think it's got to be the biggest thing in card making for sure because i mm, yeah like i said if i don't get to create all the time i just it feels like i don't have an outlet for all of this crazy energy so doing something like this definitely helps now we are almost finished with the coloring bit here so just hang in a little bit longer we're nearly there because i did forget a couple of little bits here i didn't remember or i didn't see i don't know whether i got a little bit blinded because those flowers are so pretty and i just wanted to kind of like get to the flowers and i forgot that or didn't notice that there were some leaves and stems that i hadn't colored <laughs> but anyway I'm trying to rectify that now and we are going to just fill in the the middle of the flowers here um i have gone for kind of a, a silvery gray to kind of match what a poppy would look like in real life even though there are pink poppies, but I've never seen pink poppies this color. I actually have soft pink poppies, almost like lavenderish ones in my garden. Um, but I've never seen poppies this color. But that is not going to stop us from having a good old time when it comes to coloring. Because that is the fun thing. It doesn't have to be realistic. You can just use colors that give you joy. I think that's pretty important. It's not about perfect. It's about having fun and something creating joy for you because then it will also be a joy to give away right now so i here i stopped to let this dry a little bit and then i was going to come back and you know film a little bit more but no um that didn't film at all so um i have added more color here um and i've also added a sentiment i have no idea where that footage ha went to i it's ugh, ugh, technology you and i are gonna have words one day but for now, I am going to carry on and try to keep calm because it's bling bling time. Oh yes, we are going to use some gem sparkles from the Onyx palette. Okay, so these are, they're all black, obviously, Onyx. They, there's three different sizes and we are going to add a lot of them. Yes, we are. We are. We're really going to add a lot of them because we are going to make this card pop this is gonna be delicious for the recipient to like just run her finger his or her fingers over these gemstones feel that texture from the letterpress of the inked poppies and yeah we're gonna we're gonna add a lot now i will say again that not everyone likes the same amount of bling as i do and that is fine that is completely fine. Now, if you do feel like you need a little bit of a push when it comes to the bling, I am here for you. I am here for you. We are going to make this happen. We're going to take you to bling town and you're going to love it. So this is our card almost finished. Now, I did add a slightly longer banner than the card with the self. So I'm just checking with my scissors to make sure that there aren't any like serrated edges because I don't like that when you cut something off and you get those like little tooth marks no no I don't like that so I just wanted to make sure that it was going to cut straight and then this is going to go onto our card base and our card is done what do you think adding some like dramatic texture with watercoloring easy peasy right the bling is just the icing on the cake but that is it for me for today thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you soon again bye Hey there, Lydia here. I really do hope that you've just enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the Alta New YouTube channel. Also turn on the notification bell so you can get your daily dose of crafty techniques and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.